What I want to do now is to just take you through a simple circuit analysis. Uh, this is clearly uh, what we have here is a voltage source, uh, which I'm just calling V of T. Uh, and, it's, uh, and it's connected to a series combination of a resistor, an inductor, and a capacitor. And the goal here is to find the current in this, in this uh, circuit. Uh, so we have known values then for the voltage and for the, uh, and you can see that it is given as a sinusoid, 100 cosine 100 T. So the omega is 100 uh, and the amplitude is 100 and there's a phase shift of 30 degrees. And then a resistance of 100 ohms, inductance 0.8 henrys, and capacitance 100 microfarads. So uh, what do we do with that? Well, um, what we do is we, uh, the first thing that we do is we compute the uh, inductive and capacitive impedances, ZL and ZC. So J100L gives us... 100 times 0.80 80 ohms, and then over here uh, for the inductive uh, capa uh, the capacitive uh, impedance, 1 over J 100 times uh, uh, 100, which is the uh, omega, and then 100 times 10 to the minus 6th, which is the same as 10 to the minus 4, and this works out to minus J 100 ohms. So we have now the inductive impedances and the resistance, we can just add those together as we do here. Uh, you can see that what we've done is we've created an Ohm's law expression where we have a I is equal to V over Z in this case, and we've added the three, uh, imped the three impedances together. Here's the resistance, inductive impedance, capacitive impedance, and so we end up with this kind of complex expression. So this is something that you should learn uh, to be able to do uh, with your calculator under pressure. When you have a time pressure, you're taking uh, a test and you are given this kind of, uh, uh, this kind of, or you not, may not be given it, but you may arrive at it by the same kind of process that I just described over here. Uh, where you have a polar representation in one part of a fraction and the rectangular representation in another part of the fraction. And you have to actually do that calculation. So uh, one way that you can do it is to uh, convert uh, the, uh, uh, the rectangular to polar. And then when you do a division, if you remember this, how do you do a division in complex arithmetic. You divide the magnitudes and you subtract the angles. You divide the magnitudes and you subtract the angles. And so when you do that, you get uh, 0.98 at an angle of 41.3. Uh, and so that is the expression for the current. Note that what we don't have in, this, in these representations, the, uh, in the polar, or rectangular, we don't have frequency in there. We are assuming that the frequency is the same throughout the uh, circuit, and uh, that's true as long as the circuit is, is a linear circuit. Uh, as soon as the frequency gets, uh, is changed some way or another, it becomes a nonlinear circuit, and we're not in that, in that, that's not part of our space in this course. So anyway, uh, here we are, uh, we have a now a, an expression for the current, and we can, we can do this. We can plot it, we can plot the, uh, we can plot the, um, the, uh, the actual impedance. This is the impedance being plotted on the complex plane. So the uh, plus J80 goes right here, the minus J100 goes here, and obviously the resistance runs along the real axis, and the, um, uh, the total impedance is the resultant of those three uh, input vectors. And, and we can also then plot the, um, we can show the, um, uh, the, uh, the, actually the voltages and the currents here, and so that's what I've done here, is uh, we are, show, we are uh, showing uh, 
uh, 100T um, plus 30 degrees uh, for the voltage. And then over here on a different scale, obviously, is uh, essentially 1 at 41.3. But the difference between these two, even though they are both on the, <clears throat> on the complex plane, even though they're both on the complex plane, uh, the, uh, 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 this, uh, the, um, the voltage and current are functions of time. And if you remember, what we have here is uh, the, as time increases, the angle increases all the time. So that's exactly what we're showing right here. Um, uh, this is, uh, this, everything inside the parentheses is an angle and T is increasing all the time, so that means that the angle is increasing all the time. So what we have done with the uh, functions of time here is we have captured them at, you might as well say, this is a time T equals zero. So this is an instant in time, but we know that they are actually rotating around this, uh, around the uh, origin of this thing. Uh, that is not the case for the impedance. The impedances are not functions of time. They are constants. And so in the complex plane, this is what you, uh, this is what you see for all time. That's what, that, that's where we are. So I just want to keep you, uh, keep you uh, aware of the difference between um, the, uh, and uh, the, between the complex number that is uh, representing the uh, impedance in the circuit and the complex number here. They're both complex numbers, but these are phasors. And uh, because there is a time function as part of it. And so, as I said before, uh, all phasors are complex numbers, but not all complex numbers are phasors. And this is a case right here.